Good morning, and welcome to the first of my series of videos on systems operation with the VRS Superbug, the Vertical Reality Simulations F-18 Echo variant. Beautiful aircraft, has pretty much all of the real world systems in fully operational state. And uh, this video and this series is not going to be about showing you pretty pictures of outside as you can see the quality of the way the world looks and my simulation is awful. This is for the sake of the aircraft only. There's also plenty of documentation out there on how every little display in the cockpit is laid out, what all the USCD items are, what all the DDI items are, all the menu options, and all of your cockpit system switches and adjustments. Um, that's not why I'm here. The purpose of this video is to go through procedures because there's not nearly enough of that of, you know, this is how you do this procedure, this is how you get the engine started, etc. And that's where we're going to start off with uh, getting the aircraft started and getting our systems turned on so that we are in a basically uh, not really flight ready but operations ready state. So first step right now I just uh, inadvertently disconnected that. Our parking brake must be set. If you start engines with the parking brake on set like with most aircraft you'll start floating across the airfield like an idiot. Um, we have a canopy switch here for the automatic uh, electrical canopy open. On the left side you also have the port side you also have a manual canopy crank in case you're uh, well, a release in case your electrical system isn't working properly. And it shouldn't be working right now because the battery's off. Uh, anyway, it's going to get loud in here, so we'll close that again. And uh, just as a matter of course, if you need to blow the canopy off, there is a canopy jet arm here, which just fires the explosive bolts for that without doing the full ejection procedure that yanks out your seat too. That's currently safe. There is an ejection safe or arm switch here and uh, if you're not in a flight ready state you generally want that to be in the uh, safe position. So first step is going to be to switch our battery on. You're not going to see any, much of anything up here except on the alarm enunciator. Uh, and the master caution light because I have turned off all these displays to reduce distraction. With the battery on, I mean it's it's super simple. There's an auxiliary power unit. Uh, at this point we should have a little bit going on here on the uh, EFD, the engine fuel display. So I'll just uh, get the brightness up so that you can see nothing really happening right now but you'll see what we get as we bring the auxiliary power unit on. That will spool up on its own and we'll get a green ready light when it's up to speed. Ah, look, EFD now showing our fuel quantity, which is full. We're just completely full for this flight tutorial series. Nothing with the engines, absolutely no readings, which is great. I don't want to see anything that's supposed to be off. APU on, we now crank left engine. Again, parking brake is set. RPM crank up, it'll fly up and come back down to about 60 ish, 62. And now the engine is properly ignited, started, no alarms for the engine. Left generator to on. This will now turn on the computers that are, that are driving the EDIs in the UFC. And uh, the aircraft's going to start to come alive. I'll get those on. Now we'll crank right. I want to do this when the APU times out. Once you're done cranking engines, you should turn the APU off yourself. If you miss it, however, it has a timeout here and it will it will cycle up by itself and you won't waste too much. And now we've got both engines. No alarm indications. And our right generator's on. Now that both engines started, the APU does not cycle down, so I'll just turn it off. And we'll turn on our displays. The 
these has cranks at the top, the lower one has crank at the top left, and they're now just going to be in their basic uh, menus now that the uh, computers have fired up. Well, not that one, that doesn't like it too much. And the USCD, the upfront control display, that Now we've got all computers and systems basically on and functioning. We can now taxi the aircraft uh, and generally get it working. Uh, probably a good thing to go over for nighttime as part of that. Interior light panel over here controls the operation of all of your interior system lights. You have one for the consoles themselves, a separate dimmer for the backgrounded and VG friendly instrument panel lighting and there is an interior floodlight as well if you need to start reading stuff. It's actually quite dim at night but obviously you're going to blind yourself if you have your autos on. Um, similarly there is an exterior light panel over here which I can't move the throttles out of the way without cranking things up so I've got to get to it this way. Same thing. You have your formation lights that are along the nose, tail, and wings of the aircraft. They uh, lower the density position of the measure. Those are very helpful in your inclusive proximity of the other aircraft. on to some other stuff in the next video.